Hey everyone, welcome to the Pace Studio in New York City. We're here with Kenny Wayne Shepherd. Hey. Welcome. Thanks. Also, welcome Noah. Thank you guys so much for being Thank here you. with us today. Glad to be here. What's the first song you're going to play for us? Uh, this is one off the new record. It's uh, kind of a bluesy Texas blues shuffle song. It's called Down for Love. Awesome. Whenever you're ready. All right. <laughs> Can you feel it? I'm down, down, down Believe it, I'm down, down, down You best believe that I'm down, down, down Yeah, that's what's up Baby, I'm down for love, yeah Well, you're talking about conversation Touch the can you feel it? I'm down, down, down. You need it, I'm down, down, down. You best believe it, I'm down, down, down. Yeah, that's what's up. record um sure. it's out now congratulations mm -hmm. thanks um i read that you wanted to move from more of like a traditional uh or rather from kind of blues rock mm -hmm. to a more of like a traditional roots based uh style mm -hmm. but obviously both of those are, are quite interrelated i was wondering if you could elaborate on that idea well, a little bit more our last record was all traditional blues. Mm -hmm. And so the goal actually was to make a more contemporary sounding album and to draw from 
you know, a couple of different uh, genres that are roots based, you know, genres, American music. So, you know, the end result is we have an album of 10 songs. So it's a very diverse record. And, you know, the blues is the foundation of the music, which is normal for us because that's what we do. But we like to take that you know, blues music and push it into different directions. And so we did that by pulling from rock and roll, you know, which rock came from blues. Totally. And really all music, if you trace it back to its origins, you'll wind up at blues at some point. So uh, we mixed, you know, a little like old school Memphis R&B with the blues on a track on Diamonds and Gold and uh, maybe a little country influence on a couple tracks. And, uh, you know, obviously the rock and then just the straight ahead blues like that song that we just did there. Um, so, you know, like I said, the end result, I think, is a diverse collection of songs. And we focused a lot on storytelling with this record. We want to tell great stories, have good lyrics, and most importantly, um, have great hooks and uh, melodies that make you want to sing along with it in the chorus. Totally. And of course, storytelling is so important to to old blues music in particular. Well, right. Well, all music, I think, you know, it should be, you know, there should be a <laughs> message that could, that should be conveyed. And so we wanted to address that. Some of the songs are fun and, and some of them are serious, you know. And, uh, but I think at the end of the day, if you listen to the album from beginning to end, it takes you on a journey, and that's the point. Awesome. What's the next one you've got for us today? We're going to do one. Uh, this is uh, called Hard Lesson Learned, and it's a beautiful ballad that I wrote with a friend of mine, mm -hmm. Keith Stegall, who's a fantastic songwriter, producer, and an artist himself. And uh, obviously we're going to feature the great voice of Noah Hunt on this one.
Sounded great. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thanks. So this is your ninth record. I think so. I mean, we've done some other projects. This, uh, they're calling it the ninth studio record. So. Excuse me. Yeah. Ninth studio Go record. Ahead. Lay yeah. it on down. And you've been doing this for a long time, yeah. which is not to say that you're old now. I'm you're not quite there. old blues man level. I'm getting, I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah. But you did start playing music when you were, when you were much younger. Yeah. Um, what, what are some of the most important lessons you've learned um, over, over that period of time? Well, um, you know, yeah, I mean, I started really young. The band, I mean, I formed my band at 15 and uh, had a record deal by the time I was 16. And so, yeah, at, over the years, you learn a lot. I mean, really, it's just that the main thing is do the music you believe in. Don't let anybody talk you into anything else. And I stood by that early on in my career. I had a lot of people trying to talk me into doing different things. Um, and I made the decisions that I felt were the right ones and that I thought would be best for my career and stood by that. And, you know, here we are almost 25 years later. Um, and the other thing is, is like musically, if you have somebody trying to talk you into recording something that you're not sure about, you got to be sure about it because if you are successful and it becomes popular or turns into a hit, you got to play it for the rest of your life. So you better make sure that you enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Folks on the uh, Facebook uh, live comments are are clamoring for all of the hits. By the way, <laughs> oh yeah, well, uh, the, the, yeah, I think we, we're I think we're only doing four songs, so we'll squeeze in what we can. <laughs> What's the next one you've got for us? Uh, this is an old. Well, what do you want to? Yeah, this is an old. Uh, yeah. Do King be? Yeah. So this is an old uh, Slim Harpo song, and we've been doing it for years. Uh, mm. Muddy Waters really kind of made mm. the song famous, and. Uh, yeah, the first time we did this, we were in Cincinnati in this little bar uh, called Stanley's, I think, and yeah. jumped up and did it acoustic, and then we put it in the set because it went over so well. So it's called I'm a King Bee. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
awesome. I grew up with the uh, Muddy Waters version, so that yeah. was especially cool for me. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> right on. Um, so, Kenny, you've won tons of awards, all kinds of Grammys, all kinds of you know hit songs, records. Um, but in diving kind of into this list of amazing things you've won and have done, uh, one, one award stood out to me in particular uh, that was the Blues Foundation's Keeping the Blues Alive Award. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you could talk to us a little bit about what that means to you and kind of what you think the blues will sound like in the future. Well, uh, I mean, it was great to win that award. I mean, obviously, it's great anytime you're nominated or you win an award because you're recognized by your peers and the people who are passionate about the kind of music that you're doing. Um, but that particular one was great because we did a project called 10 Days Out Blues from the Back Roads, and it was a documentary film that we did and an album, a recording of our trip. And we went on this 10 day journey through the south of the US and met up with some amazing blues musicians and basically made a film and a, and a record live, uh, like playing with them on their front porch or in their kitchen or in the backyard or in a neighborhood blues bar. And it was like documenting history, you know, in a sense. And it was a really important project. We're all very proud to have been a part of it. Um, and, you know, it, we had no idea how timely it was because now, at this point, I think 16 of the artists that we featured have passed away. Um, so it is important. I mean, we love blues music. And so to be recognized, you know, and we did that project to help uh, expose some of those artists to a wider audience. And then some of them didn't need it, like B.B. King and, you know, the guys from Muddy Waters Band and Howlin' Wolf's Band. But there were some of those artists that were not household names. And our goal was to try and help broaden their fan base and introduce the rest of the world to their music as well because we love blues music we love the blues community and what they've done for us for so many years and so it's nice to be recognized as somebody who's trying to help keep the blues live because that's what we're doing you know no matter how big or how small we're doing our part to try and keep it relevant as far as the future of blues music goes um, you know I think it's it's in great hands there's young people coming in every day infusing uh, you know, new sounds into blues music. I mean, we do it. Uh, you know, we make contemporary blues records. We make traditional blues records. I think it's important, though. Uh, they just recently added, they took away the contemporary blues category from the Grammys for a few years, and then we were successful. Uh, a lot of people rallied together and helped get it put back in, so it's been reinstated. And I think that's important, because now we have a traditional blues category and a contemporary blues category, and the contemporary blues category, just its existence um, identifies and acknowledges that there is new thing, there's new things happening with blues music and uh, there are new sounds and new directions that it's going in for the future and we will always have the tradition of the old school blues as well. And so to have both of them recognized I think is really important for the genre. That's really well put, thanks. Yeah. So you have one more for us today. Yeah. We're very lucky you're playing four songs. Yep. What's the last one you've got? Uh, we're going to do an oldie but a goodie. <clears throat> we're going to do a hit. <laughs> Our biggest one. Yeah. This Blue is on cool. Black. There you go.
I grew up listening to on the radio, so it made me want to play lead guitar. Thank you guys so much. Um, Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Noah. Kenny Wayne Shepherd Band, Lay It On Down, is out now via Concord Records. You guys are on tour. All those dates are online. Thanks so much for being here with us today. Thanks for having us.